If you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this, people who believe in the paranormal, what convinced you that it actually occurs or is real? What convinced me was that I saw it happen, and my cousin saw it with me. I was cruising through some rural areas in my cousin's car. I want to say 1 or 2 AM, we weren't smoking or drinking, just having a nice cruise. We went on this road that went through some heavy woods, but we had done it before, so we had no fears. It was dark, of course, with no moon and just a slight sprinkle of rain. We were coming to this part of the woods where there was a street light, but it was an old light that was dimming out. There used to be an old building there that was torn down, but the light stayed up for a few years. Mind you, this was very rural, no one lived nearby for maybe 20 miles, so it was extremely rare to pass another car, let alone another person, at this time. It didn't help that the locals said to stay out of the woods at night. I was just looking out my window at the woods when we were coming up to the light. Next thing I know, the car does a movie turn, like stomp the brakes, do a 180, and duck and burn rubber the other way. I get weirded out and look back through the car. I see the road illuminated by the street light, and I see this massive black figure beside the road. It takes one step, and it's in the middle of the road, another step, and it's already on the other side. Immediately, I look forward, scared out of my mind. I look at my cousin and see intense fear on his face. We don't say a word to each other, and he drops me off. I stay up till sunrise and finally go to sleep. Funny now that I think about it, we never talked about it once, not after it happened. But yeah, we saw Bigfoot, as do the locals who tell similar stories. Driving home from my parents' house last winter around 9 p.m., there were no other cars on the road. I was flipping through the radio stations, probably not paying as much attention to the road as I should have been, trying to find something interesting to listen to. I looked up from the radio and saw what I thought might be a blue plastic bag or something on the road just ahead. My eyes fixated on it as I tried to stop. It looked completely still and surreal, like really dense and calm smoke, completely motionless. ABS kicked in, but I couldn't stop in time. I didn't hear a thud, but I got out to look anyway. This is in rural Maine, near a college. It's really not uncommon to see wildlife on the road, especially with trash from the college. I've seen raccoons with bags stuck on their heads, dogs carrying around trash bags, all sorts of critters. I wanted to make sure I didn't hit one, so I got out to check. I looked all over the outside. There are no tracks on the road besides my own tire tracks. No footprints. I had to rationalize what I saw. Maybe it was steam from a storm drain? There are not many storm drains in the middle of nowhere in Maine. I looked all over the road for an explanation. Finally, I shined my light over towards the woods, and I was stopped, I shit you not, directly next to a cross on the side of the road where a pedestrian had been hit and killed a few years ago. Immediately, the hair on the back of my neck stood up, and I felt my entire body tingling. I got out of there pretty quick. Our family vacations when I was a kid were always camping and hiking. Lots of hiking. Usually somewhere in Virginia, West Virginia, or Tennessee. We went to the Blue Ridge Mountains pretty often. We always did day hikes, so we'd get to the peak and back down in one day without worrying about nightfall. We were at the top of one of the mountains, and I was messing around climbing up on this rock that was even higher up. I walked around the taller rock, and this guy, walking stick in hand, wearing red shorts and a white t-shirt, was standing there. It surprised me a bit because I didn't know someone else was on this part of the mountain, and he smiles at me and goes, careful. It drops off over here. And he walked around the bend a little, out of sight, and I followed. I saw the huge drop off, but no fellow hiker. Anywhere. He wasn't there. I turned around and walked back, met up with my parents again, and told them about this. My dad said it must have been a guardian angel. I don't know what it was. Paranormal? Maybe. Not spooky. Just a friendly warning. There was no one in that whole mountaintop area that looked anything like him. He didn't walk past me to go back down. It was very, very real, I can honestly not explain it. I go camping and multi-day hiking as a hobby. I've been stalked by a mountain lion before and have been hopelessly lost a hundred miles from anything, so I know the woods. The weirdest thing I've ever heard was a wailing at night. I don't know what this thing was, but I woke up around 2 AM. My fire had died, and there was an overcast, so it was pretty much completely dark. I was camped in a ravine-like valley, cutting through the mountains of Tennessee. This noise was in the valley coming right at me from some distance over 500 yards it really sounded like a man yelling in deathly agony. If you've ever heard somebody's yells who are passing due to trauma, that is how it sounded. It's an odd thing and unsettling to describe. Anyway, I was lying in the dark, gun in hand, while this thing was getting closer and closer. 
Within 300 years, it stopped wailing and left me in silence. A couple minutes after it stopped, I could hardly make out a figure in the dark about 25 years to my right. Whatever it was, it was tall, at least 5 feet, and it was moving roughly west to east at a pretty good pace, making absolutely no noise as it went. It seemed to be gliding along, there was no lateral movement with this thing. It just went by, and I heard it wail a couple more times far down the valley. The next day, I checked for tracks and didn't find any of significance, just old deer tracks. I still have no idea what could have made that noise. It was hauntingly human and sounded extremely distressed. I still don't believe in the paranormal, but that definitely made me question it. It was like 2 AM, and I was riding my motorcycle home from a field party. Now this was in the backwoods of Kentucky, so there were no street lights or other traffic. I was watching the sides of the road for deer to pop out when I saw something running along the side of the road. I slowed down a bit, thinking it was a deer, but when I got closer, it looked more like a person running on their hands and feet. I'm really thin too, I don't have the profile of a deer. Whatever it was was pale, and on all fours, it was taller than the grass, two to three feet. I dropped gear and got out there as fast as I could. When I was younger, I used to collect porcelain dolls. My mom was a huge fan and would often bring me some back from Mexico. The dolls would move out of the corner of my eye and sometimes appear in new places I hadn't placed them. Eventually, I got rid of my entire collection out of fear. But this isn't about the dolls. Around 10 years old, my aunt used to drop her kid off at random hours of the night so she could party freely. I remember many nights waking up and seeing my young cousin crying, standing next to my bed, waiting for me to acknowledge her. One night, I woke up around 2 a.m. and saw the outline of a small girl with long, curly hair. I spoke out to her, thinking it was my cousin. I told her to come to bed. But she was unmoving. The outline stayed there, staring at me. Eventually I went back to sleep, still under the assumption that it was my kid cousin acting up. The following morning, I went into the kitchen searching for my cousin. I remember asking my mom where she was, and she told me my cousin never came by that night. Fast forward a couple years, and more spooky shit continues going on in the house, so my mother brings in a lady to bless the house. When the woman walked into my room, I remembered the look on her face. She stopped and looked around, whispering prayers. The woman stopped her whispers and asked my mom, have you had a daughter that's passed? Of course, I'm the only living daughter, so I tell the woman, no, it can't be possible. But my mom spoke about how, before I was born, she had miscarried another girl. The woman continued on, describing my unborn sister. She had curly hair like me, she enjoyed playing with dolls, and according to the woman, she came often to visit me. I lived in a house with a poltergeist for around 15 years. The house was Victorian, and the poltergeist just used to steal things and then put them back in odd places weeks later. We often found my dad's and my glasses in funny places in the morning after we'd put them on the bedside table at night, like the cat's food bowl or, once, in the garden. My A-level Latin set textbook of the Aeneid went missing for two weeks before turning up in the fridge, a month before my exam as well, that one was irritating. A coffee table once moved from the downstairs living room to the living room upstairs overnight. We found a plant from the garden dumped on our dining room table once, roots and soil and all. We set up cameras for a few months at one point after I found my glasses in the garden, because we thought maybe one of us was sleepwalking or the cat was stealing things, but no, no sleepwalking, no kleptomaniac cat, no floating objects, or anything else. It was like stuff would dematerialize and rematerialize somewhere else. The first time was when I was visiting my dad for the summer. He and my stepmom had just gotten married and were looking for a house to rent or buy. I went with them to look at houses, and we ended up at one that was small and cute. I had two bedrooms, nothing fancy. I remember it being a white craftsman-style home. I sat across the street from a church and graveyard. As soon as we walked in, it felt heavy. I was only eight ninths, but even I knew it didn't feel right. There were no window coverings, but it still seemed so dark. There were spider webs and daddy long legs everywhere. I walked into what would be my bedroom and instantly froze. The graveyard was my view. I heard my dad say, what do you think, kiddo? When I turned around, he wasn't there. He was in the backyard with my stepmom and realtor. I got chills, and the room got cold. It felt like I was being watched as I ran out into the backyard, yelling, no, not this one. And that was that. We ended up getting a different house. It's been at least 35 years since that happened. I never believed in the paranormal until a few years ago. I was using an Ouija board with a few friends, and it wasn't the first time I had ever used one. In the past, nothing ever happened, 
it was obvious that we were the ones moving the slider, and it was something that we used to make fun of each other. But this time was different. It was very different from the beginning, there was a strange feel in the room, something I had never felt before and haven't felt since. When I took the slider, I was moving it, but it felt as if I wasn't alone. The slider proceeded to move in ways I was not moving it, and after a few quick seconds, it began to spell out the word leave. I told my friends something was going on, and they all thought I was kidding and trying to mess with them. Then the slider, moving on its own now, spelled out now, and we were all freaked out. Before any of us could do anything, a flower pot in my friend's living room flies off its table about four feet and smashes to the ground. We shuffle to put the board away and go outside, and as we are going outside, my friend screams and claims something hit him. When we get outside, all freaked out at what just happened, he lifts up his shirt and realizes a handprint on the center of his back. I have never used an Ouija board since, and I have never doubted the existence of the paranormal since that day. When I was about eight, my mom and I lived with some family friends. During winter, I was staring out their window, looking at the snow, and out of the corner of my eye, I saw my grandmother. I've only seen her in photos, mainly because she committed suicide before I was one, from the corner of my eye, I could see white slippers, what looked like one of those nightgowns some old people wear, and the bottom of her dark brown curls. Obviously, this startled me, and I ran to go tell my mom about this because they were really close. I stopped for some reason and looked at the floor. I slowly looked up and realized that she was in front of me. Once I realized what just happened, I went and told my mom. She said that my grandmother was looking after me since we were going through a hard time and that I should always consider her my guardian angel after that. I still don't understand what I saw. When I was in fourth grade, I just moved into my dad and stepmom's house. My sister and I slept in bunk beds, hers being the bottom and mine the top, the bed rested against the wall with the door at the foot of the bed. One night, I'm sleeping at the head of the bed, and I wake up and hear some weird noises. At first, I thought it was my sister, but I poked my head down and saw that it wasn't. Something compels me to look out the door and into the hallway. I scoot down to the foot of the bed, stick my head out the top of the foot frame, and face my parents' bedroom door that is across from mine. I look to the floor, and there is this pitch black human looking thing on the ground. I don't know what I did, but it noticed me, and it scuttled or crawled fast across the floor and up my bunk ladder, and I just remember seeing black. I remember waking up that morning at that same spot on the bed. If anybody has an idea of what this is, it would help a lot. I used to live in a very old house, and shit would happen that you just could not explain rationally. It's really hard for me to explain to people because it sounds like I'm nuts, but my mother also experienced a lot of it. Doors would open or close and slam at random. I witnessed this firsthand dozens of times while living there. Now, you could say that it could have been air pressure causing it or some type of draft. That absolutely wasn't the case. Something that also happened was that TVs would turn off or on. One thing that happened frequently was that you would leave a room, and the TV would turn off behind you. Random noises like footsteps and knocks. You would often wake up, and the door you knew was shut would be wide open. This house had a lot of older iron door latches and whatnot, and you could clearly hear those turn when doors would open. In this house, there was a main living room and a sub. Living area, between the two, there was a door. I once sat on the couch and watched the door knob turn and the door slowly creep open. My mom and I had moved into this house because she married the man who owned it, shortly after moving there, he passed away. And his previous wife had died in the house as well and he always told stories about weird shit happening during the time I knew him. As a child, I had two imaginary friends who were siblings. The girl had one arm that was see-through, but with an outline, your generic ghostish arm. I don't really remember them, but my dad has brought up how I used to play with them and talk about them. Then his girlfriend and her young son moved in. He starts to say that he plays with two young kids and describes a pair of siblings, one with a water arm. He says that they protect him in his room. His room, which was my playroom as a kid. I refused to be in it with the door closed and was always terrified of it, even as a teenager. I couldn't tell you why, I was just freaked out. Even people who came to stay said they never wanted to stay there. We had a few instances of the door opening or closing on its own, but you just brush those things off as an adult. So basically, this young kid was freaked out by the same room and never wanted to sleep in there, would always sneak out to the couch, and had my exact imaginary friends even though I was mainly out of the house at that point. Years ago, I was at Boy Scout camp with my troop. I was standing by our fire pit with one of my friends as the sun set. Our campsite was mostly empty due to the other scouts participating in a water polo tournament or some other beach activity set up by the counselors. There were no cats in the camp, campsite, 
or area surrounding the camp, at least according to the counselors, when this occurred. By our fire pit, there was prickly brush that had very little green vegetation to conceal the ground beneath it. My friend is the type to mess with me, but I told this story so many times while in his presence that he would have gotten sick of it and would have told me if he was just messing with me in order for me to stop talking about it. I was standing with my friend by the fire pit when I looked to the side of the fire pit and saw a short-haired black cat with amber eye smelling the ground. I comment to my friend about the cat, as I'm one of those people that just randomly says words about the things around them, and he asks, what cat? I gesture with my head towards the cat and say, that cat. He says, I don't see a cat. I point at it and say, that cat. He just gives me a look, so I walk closer to the cat to where I'm about 5 feet away from it, and I say, that cat, again. He just gives me a look, so I walk right up to the cat, as in right up, and point straight down at the cat, saying determinedly, that cat. I look at him, and he continues to blink at me. I look down at the cat, and it looks up at me, seeming to only just realize that I could see it. It turns around and starts walking towards one of the thorn bushes at the edge of the fire pit, but before it gets there, it just vanishes. I don't mean like poof in a puff of smoke or that it walked behind a bit of a tree stump and didn't cross back into my line of sight. I mean, as it was walking, my brain was processing that it was walking, and when it disappeared, my brain expected it to keep walking, but it couldn't handle the counter logic of what was actually going on. It was like there were missing frames, like if you were watching a film on a film reel and someone decided to cut out 5 seconds of a scene mid-sentence and move on to another character talking instead. You noticed that it wasn't something terribly specific that was missing, but it was still important enough to you that you noticed it wasn't there. The cat wasn't ghostly at all, it looked like I could have reached down and petted it at any moment, something I was actually considering doing until it up and disappeared. I've had several experiences with the paranormal over the years, but this was the experience that really caused me to reevaluate everything I knew and had experienced about the world. My friend still says he never saw a cat. When I was three, I was going through the car wash with my mom for the first time. It so happened to be the middle of winter in Minnesota, but I'm not sure my tiny brain made any connection between water and below freezing temperatures and ice, but who knows. Anyways, before we entered, I was asking my mom a ton of questions like any kid would, including. Mom, what happens if the door of the car wash comes down on the car? She reassured me that she had been through tons of car washes and that that had never happened before. So we went through the car wash. Afterward, as we are exiting the car wash, the wheels spin out with the very front of the car outside of the building, and sure enough, the door comes down onto the front of the vehicle. Although I barely remember this occurrence, I do remember her turning around and looking at me like I was something other than human. It's totally understandable, though. It must have been creepy as duck to experience as an adult. Back when I was in high school, I was at my girlfriend's house at night. I was 15 and couldn't drive yet, so my mom had to come pick me up. It was probably around midnight when she got there. As usual, we were saying our goodbyes. We were standing at the front door, you can see the driveway and the front yard from the door. There were no lights outside of the house, so it was very dark outside. I was hugging her, facing the door so I could see the driveway and the yard, and I saw a shadow rip across the driveway, behind my mom's car, and down the hill. When I say rip, I mean this thing was moving as fast as a cheetah, I live on the US East Coast, no, it wasn't a cheetah. The speed that it was moving at, and considering the slope of the hill on the side of the driveway, something with any mass would have taken flight off the edge of the driveway, but this thing just stuck to the ground like it was on a track. As I mentioned, it was very dark outside, but I was able to see it. It appeared to be darker than night. It didn't really have any defined shape to it, kind of just a blur, but it was probably 2 to 3 feet tall and very long, roughly 6 to 7 feet long. When I saw it, I kind of jumped back and told her that I thought I just saw something, but I truly believe that it was just my eyes playing a trick on me since it was late. So I start going out to get in my mom's car in the driveway, she was parked with the front of the car facing away from the house, probably 50 feet away. I got in the car, and she started to drive away. We went about our drive home chatting and then I said it to her. I could have sworn I saw a shadow bolt across the driveway and down the hill when you were waiting for me. When I said this, she told me afterwards that she felt the blood drain out of her. Apparently, she saw the same thing but didn't want to scare me by telling me. Except for how I saw it go across the driveway, left to right, behind her, and down the hill, she saw it moving, at the same insane speed, away from the house, to her right, along the driveway, and disappearing into the woods, the house has a very long driveway with a wooded area on either side. She described it the exact same way as what I saw, and the path in which it moved aligned exactly with her sighting. 
Still to this day, both of us get chills when we bring it up. A couple years ago, I lived way out in the middle of nowhere, maybe 20 miles from town, my trash can was a good 50 feet from my house. I procrastinated taking out the trash till 11 p.m. at night. I walked to the can and threw the crap away, but something with claws and human-like fingers grabbed me by the leg. I couldn't see because it was 11 p.m. in the middle of nowhere, with no city lights to shine. But this was Oklahoma, you don't go outside without at least a knife, but I had a ducking machete, and I smacked that mother ducker in the face with it, and it screeched like a coyote. I ran back to the house, and that 50 feet felt like 500. I lived in a trailer house though, but as some of you may know, animals can crawl under your trailer. This thigh crawled under the trailer, and I could hear it moving and scattering, it sounded like a four foot tall raccoon. That thing freaked me the duck out, the noise it made was hell. I'm glad it was too dark to see its face, I don't want to know what that ducking monster looked like. I live in a fairly old house. I know many of you don't believe in ghosts, so I'll try to make this as reasonable as possible. So my brother swears he hears my voice talking to my mom. He walked into my mom's room to find my mom by herself. I, of course, wasn't home, and my mom didn't hear anything. Then another day, the house is empty, and my brother comes home to hear my voice calling out to my mom. He responds, saying I'm home for lunch. He quickly realizes he's home alone. Another time, my mom was out in the yard gardening when she heard me scream for her. She said the screams were coming from my room. She quickly got to my room, only to find that I hadn't arrived home from school yet. This has been going on for months, and I've personally never heard it. What do you guys think? Could it be their minds, or is there a legit ghost imitating my voice? I moved into a house with three other buddies in the winter of 2015. Everything was going great in my first place after moving out of my parents' house. After a few weeks, I started hearing strange things in the house, particularly in my room downstairs. Now, I've always been interested in the paranormal, but nothing had happened personally to me until this one night, when SHT started going crazy. My buddy, who didn't live there, and I were in my room with the door closed, playing some Skate 3, and paused to look on our phones for a bit. All of a sudden, we hear a loud meow, which sounds like it's inside the room. There were two cats in the house, so this wasn't too strange, but then it happened again, even louder. There are no cats in the room. We both looked at each other as the meowing continued, each time louder and louder, now accompanied by the sound of footsteps. I wish I could explain how alien sounding these cat sounds were, but we were so frozen that neither of us thought to start recording. Later that evening, I went up to my roommate, who used to have that room when he was younger, this house was his parents' place, and casually asked him if he ever had anything unusual happen to him in there. The first thing out of his mouth is, yeah, dude, I used to hear cat sounds all the time, and almost weekly I would feel a cat jump onto my bed and sit on me. Without even mentioning what happened to me, he went on with stories for a few minutes about creepy cat stuff happening to him. Some very weird shit went down over the course of the next few months, such as random objects showing up in different places, waking up in the middle of the night to objects moved around in the bathroom, my roommate waking me up just hysterical because his TV was turning on and off, and a locked door opening with the only key for it being 100s of km away. I can elaborate on any of these if anyone wants. The last time something happened to me was when I was cleaning out a dresser on the final day of moving out. I had all the drawers open, picking up my last few items, when I jumped back due to a fury of scratching sounds from inside the drawers. It was so real that I literally ran out of the room, and I still haven't set foot in that room since that day over two years ago. We all talked about it afterward, and we figure it was either that there have been quite a few cats who have passed on the property and or that their grandma, who passed away while we were living there, had something to do with it. I haven't told this story to many people because it sounds crazy, but everything I experienced felt so real that I'm definitely convinced of something now. I was the night watchman at an abandoned mental hospital turned state park for a summer in college. The only creepy thing that happened was one night I was with one of the state park police, and we saw flashlights in one of the buildings. Kids constantly broke in, and other people broke in to gut the old buildings of any copper they could find. So, as I was saying, one night we saw flashlights moving around, so we went in. The officer pulled her gun and flashlight, and in we went. We could hear her footsteps on the floor above us, and we slowly and quietly went upstairs. We checked every room and found nothing. Then we heard footsteps above us again. This happened for a few floors until we were on the top floor below the roof. We heard footsteps up on the roof, so we went up there. Still nothing. We never found anyone or any indication that anyone had been there. It was freaking creepy. When I was in high school and living in Seattle, ghost hunting, visiting abandoned places, was a frequent activity for us. 
There is a place north of Seattle called 13 Steps to Hell. The story is that a satanic family once lived in a house where they had a cemetery deep in their backyard. These stones date back at least 100 years. The family built 13 steps into the cemetery, with two giant pointed pillars at the top. Supposedly, each step down would give you hallucinations, you would hear things, feel things, and on the final step, you would see fire, hell. The steps continue to be bulldozed because the current residents surrounding the area probably do not appreciate late night visitors. But the steps always seem to reappear. I've seen them. On our first journey, it took us nearly four hours of driving and walking to find it. There are no clear directions anywhere online, at least not at that time. We accidentally stumbled upon a path just as we were about to give up. It is about a mile of hiking deep into the woods. Along the overgrown trail, you have a lot of barriers to duck under and over, and there are random things everywhere, such as crashed cars in the middle of the woods and abandoned items as well. After 30 minutes of hiking in the creepy darkness of this overgrown forest, we were going to head back when my friend pointed to me and said, shit, look where you are standing. I looked down, and I was unknowingly standing between the pillars on the first step down to the cemetery. At that point, I was not going to walk down the steps, but I did explore the cemetery. My friends explored further down and started yelling and screaming, they told us to stop scaring them, even though we were at least 200 feet away from them. We left promptly after they ran up and insisted we leave. I never talked about it again. I went back five times after with friends who had heard, and I was the only one who knew how to get there, so I gladly took them. Nothing creepy happened on those trips. One year later, some friends asked me to take them. We went at midnight one evening and went there. We looked around the cemetery, nothing out of the ordinary. I went down to the cemetery and rubbed one gravestone so I could read it. Some satanic symbols we were standing in a circle debating how much longer we would stay when, all of a sudden, a three-foot log came flying at us and landed in the middle of the circle. We all look around and notice that no one from the group is missing, so it wasn't any of our friends. 30 seconds later, all of this SHT is flying at us. I look at them and just say, run. We started running back through the overgrown trail, with logs, branches, rocks, etc., being thrown at us. I've never ran so fast in my life. At one point, my friend looked back and saw two giant yellow eyes after us, and all we heard were growling noises running after us. Ducking under fallen trees, running through sticker bushes, and falling several times, we run to the car, get in, and drive away as fast as possible. None of us said a word to each other for at least an hour. And I have never been back since. Not my story, my dad's. When he was a teenager, he and his friends snuck into an old graveyard by one of their grandmother's houses. While they were walking around, they found a gravestone belonging to a guy who had the same full name as my dad. Weird enough, because they lived in a relatively small suburb in Massachusetts at the time. Worse, this guy died on my father's birthday. So, of course, my dad's friends started hyping it up, saying the ghost of this old guy was inhabiting his body. So, joking around still, they decided to have a seance. They'd talk through my dad to this ghost, saying his full name and asking the ghost to do stuff. Charles Lawrence Murphy, make the next car that drives by be a blue car. So a blue car drives by next, but no big deal. Charles Lawrence Murphy, if you can hear us, please make three birds fly overhead. Three birds, as soon as his friend finished. Weird, to be sure. This went on for a little longer, and everything they asked kept happening. Creeped out and honestly fed up by the whole thing, my dad finally talked to his ghost. He walked over to another grave and picked up a flower pot. He placed it on top of the headstone and said, Charles Lawrence Murphy, knock over this flower pot. My dad then turned his back to the tombstone to make sure none of his friends would knock it over to mess with him. They waited a while, and, of course, nothing happened. They eventually gave up, and my dad sat down in front of the tombstone, just to make sure his buddies wouldn't mess with him before they left or something. So, they all just started shooting the shit for a while and eventually forgot all about that flower pot. Until, 30 minutes later, my dad heard a loud crash right behind him. My dad looked at his friends, and none of them had to look to know what it was. They all booked it out of that cemetery and never came back. My dad admits they were all drinking that night, but he doesn't give an inch when people challenge his story. He didn't bump the tombstone, he was watching his friends the whole time, and all the things they asked for did happen. Not a lot of things scare my dad, but I can tell that really got to him. This happened this past Thanksgiving morning. I work as a police officer, and someone called in an open door complaint. Now, most of the time, it's just the owner forgetting to lock the door behind them when they leave, and the wind or something blows it open. This particular call was in a pretty shitty part of town, 
As a matter of fact, we had a murder five to six houses down earlier that week. The victim got stabbed in the heart over dope and a puppy. So another officer and myself are outside with the complainant, owner of the house, as we hold radio traffic and approach the house to clear it. By clearing, I mean to ensure there is no actual burglar inside. As we approach the house, approximately 15 to 20 feet from it, I began hearing a breathing noise. I could only hear it from my left ear, and it was coming from a closed window located in the left bedroom of the house. I was approaching from the right. At this point, I legitimately believed we had a burglar inside and told the other officer to turn down his radio in order to avoid us being detected as we approached. As we kept walking up, I repeatedly asked him, do you hear the breathing? To which he replied that he did not. The breathing continued until we went through the open door. We ended up clearing the base level of the residence and not locating anyone or anything. We then went to the bedroom, where I kept hearing the breathing. I cleared it a second time just to ensure nothing was there. Once I was done, I located one of those pull down stairs in the attic. The other officer and I rock paper suckered as to who gets to go up and check. Guess who got to go? Me. There was nothing up in the attic either. So I then talked to the house owner, who says there is some crawl space under the house, and he hears some breathing once in a while too. He then tells me there was a murder in this house about 25 to 30 years ago that his realtor told him of. It said some lady got murdered in there by an unknown method. I tried looking through records, but I did not locate anything. Anyway, it freaked me the duck out. My mother-in-law's house is pretty creepy. I lived there for a little over a year when I and my wife were younger. Built in something like 1900, it was originally a schoolhouse but turned residential sometime after World War II. A few of my wife's stories are pretty chilling. Standing in front of the house, to the left, there's a shed or garage, and about 80 to 90 feet behind that is a large barn. She claims that every so often she would look to the top of the barn and notice a bright light, even though the area of the barn was cut off due to the access door being nailed shut, there was a fire up there at some point. Her mother went to investigate and found no signs of squatters, only a load of spiders and a raccoon nest. Once, the large stereo in the living room kept turning on. Thinking it was the remote malfunctioning, she took the batteries out, but it still kept turning on. She claims that after she unplugged the stereo, the display was still flickering on and off for 4-5 to five minutes. There was also the time her mother's music box got inexplicably wound and started playing at 2.30am she unwound it, wrapped it in a towel, and shoved it in her drawer. Two weeks later, it happened again. I once heard a woman scream, get out, while feeding my son. He was fresh out of the hospital, we were on the bed watching TV, I had him on my chest and my back to the wall, the bedroom door was shut. All of a sudden, I hear a woman scream, get out. I placed my son in his crib and ran downstairs, thinking her aunt, whom we were living with at the time, was in some sort of trouble. I get downstairs to find all the lights off, her aunt asleep in her bed, and no goddamn body else there. I also regularly heard children running, though my son at the time wasn't old enough to walk. One time in particular, I heard what sounded like a large group of children coming up the stairs, laughing hysterically at something. I should probably start by saying that my cousin told me about this story right after seeing the spirit. My cousins live in a severely haunted house, which they believe is haunted by many spirits. The actual story, it was around midnight, and something had woken up my cousin, he doesn't remember what, but he said he saw something in the corner of his eye. He tries to get back to sleep no less than 5 minutes later, but is distracted again by what he's seen, this time it's closer to him. He starts to question what it could possibly be, and after falling asleep again, he is woken up for the second time. At this point, it was around 12.30 am, and my cousin was woken up again. He lays there for a moment, and he looks to his right, and there it is. A headless, female-looking spirit was right next to him. It takes my cousin a second to react, as he hasn't fully come to his senses, and then it hits him. He jumps out of bed, goes to his parents, and explains what he has just seen. His parents go and check, and they find nothing. From this point on, his parents believed he was imagining things, but to this day, my cousin believes that what he saw that night was 100% real. My story begins in Long Beach. We lived in an older house for the better part of 18 years. When I was 12, I started to have terrible insomnia. Something I still deal with today, it started when I had these dreams about an old lady. Think of an uber-powerful witch with hair levitating all around and eyes beaming white light. And on top of that, the most frightening scream I've ever heard. I can still hear it in my mind, like it was yesterday. I started sleeping in the living room, which had two couches. Overlooking the living room was the kitchen. Imagine a window of sorts, no glass, though. I started watching late-night TV, 
Nick at night, and that sort of stuff. One night I was watching a dream of Jeannie, and I heard something in the kitchen. It sounds like someone is taking an empty soda can and slamming it against the counter. I look in the kitchen, and there she is. Just like my dream. Aura of white lights and everything. Then comes the scream. I almost spit on my pants. I blink, and she's gone. Just vanished. I'm horrified, I don't want to wake my parents, as I had school in the morning and would have gotten in trouble for being up. I go and wake my brother, who gets pissed, but I tell him. He says he has seen it stay away from the kitchen at night. I couldn't believe it. I tried to sleep, but I would wake up and see her face on the ceiling of my room. Just glaring at me. The most scary smile I've seen in my life. Teeth are black and sharp. Eyes looking straight through you. I'd quickly hide under my blanket and pretend to be asleep, a classic kid's move, but it never worked. If you did go to the kitchen at night, the lights would simply not work, she kept them off. That scared the shit out of me. The lights worked all day, but come nightfall, they would simply not turn on. I still see her face, and I haven't lived in that house for years. After a while, though, as I got older, her actions diminished, maybe she was losing power or crossing over. Who knows? I talked to the people who lived next door to us. They said they knew about the old lady too. The last people to live there moved out because of it. Like I said, as I got older, the activity wasn't as frequent. If anything, she was kind of like a poltergeist. Mischievous etc. I've been struggling for quite some time with it. I still have dreams about her doing the screaming, this is why I believe. Because I know, I've seen it firsthand. I'm not psychic, but I do have very high perception. I think that's why she reaches out to me. So a bit of backstory, this was at my ex's house, who lives in an old cottage. When she moved in, her mom had a medium come round, and she was told a woman's spirit lives in one half of the house where the kitchen and utility room are. Now, this was a couple years ago. My ex was having a group of friends over for a party, and a friend and I decided we wanted to do an Ouija board, so we searched for how to make one and did it all properly. At around 3 in the morning, we lit a few candles and did it in the bedroom above the utility room. There was movement on the board when we did it, but it was nonsensical, and I assumed one of us had subconsciously been moving it, so we said our goodbyes and packed up. This is where it got weird. About 30 minutes later, we noticed that the clock in the kitchen had stopped, at about exactly the time we were doing the Ouija board. Obviously pretty freaked out, we asked my ex about it, and she said that the clock had never stopped before that, has restarted since, and has not stopped again with the same battery still in it. It got even weirder when everyone was chilling in the lounge and someone said that they felt they had closed the utility room door, but now it was open again. Me and my pal were interested in this, so we checked the door. Bearing in mind that this door needs you to physically turn the knob in order to open it, we double-checked by both pushing into the door, and it cannot open by itself. So we closed it and went into the lounge, telling everyone they weren't allowed into that half of the house, thinking someone may just be pranking us. About 30 minutes later, we went into the kitchen, and the utility door was open again. My heart dropped when I saw that, and it gave me a cold, sinking feeling in my chest. To this day, there is no explanation for how this happened, and so after knowing of the supposed spirit in that part of the house on the Ouija board, I believe this to be fairly concrete evidence for the existence of the paranormal, and I have been a believer ever since. Okay, so this happened when I was 17. I live on the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains. My friend and I were at a bonfire party, and we were going home. I promise I wasn't drinking, but he was. I was his designated driver. He sat in the back seat, and I was driving. Now, the entirety of where we live is a super small and spread out town or county. To go back home from where we were, there were a lot of secluded roads we had to take. It isn't safe to drive at night because of the drug addicts and the animals that like to run across the road at night. And right before we get back home, there's a hill we have to go up. It's notorious for people abandoning their unwanted pets and not being super safe at night. I got to the very top of the hill, and I saw something moving out the window to my right. And I looked over and saw what looked very similar to a garden gnome. He had a long beard, standard gnome clothing, and a very blank look on his face. I was literally scared shless, and I stopped the car. He just stared at me the whole time, and I thought I was so tired I was seeing things. I tried waking my friend up in the back seat to stay awake with me, but he was so tired and drunk that it wouldn't have helped much. The gnome just stared at me the whole time. I started driving, and it scared the shit out of me when he started running beside the car at the exact same pace. Whenever I would speed up, he would match the pace, and whenever I slowed down, he would match the pace. I know you're asking why the hell would you slow down, and I don't know either. My friend woke up to throw up, I guess, 
and he was going to roll down the window to get some fresh air, and he saw the gnome right beside the car. He freaked out, and so did I. I hit the gas and got down the hill as fast as I could, and the gnome went at the same speed as us. Once we got to the bottom of the hill, it jumped into the bushes. I've been down that hill a thousand times before and after that experience, and I've never had something like that happen to me again. I don't know if it was an actual gnome or not, but that's what I and my friend call it. My grandma has lived here her whole life and knows weird things happen here, but she swears up and down she has never seen a gnome before. Most people haven't. I wasn't a believer in the paranormal. I thought the idea was silly, and in no way could I believe ghosts or spirits could ever exist. I was 13 years old at the time. A friend invited me over to his house to play the new Zelda game on the Wii. I believe it was Skyward Sword. While playing the game, I was getting thirsty and told him I was going downstairs to get a drink of water. I left his room and noticed there was an odd shadow at the end of the hall. I could tell it was very unnatural looking. I stood there for a minute, observing this shadow. I immediately got a feeling in my stomach that something was wrong. It was a feeling of fear that I had never experienced. I eventually told myself that this was ridiculous and that it was just a shadow. I took two steps forward, and the shadow looked like it had turned into a person. My heart is beating fast at this point. My level of fear was greatly increased. The shadow then looked like it started to walk towards me, and in a blink of an eye, it vanished. I told myself, there's no way this is happening. I'm imagining things. You only see this stuff in horror movies. I calmed myself down and got the courage to get to the stairs. You probably know where this is going at this point. I grab the side rail of the stairs, and before I can make my first step down, it feels like a hand is touching my right shoulder. I stop myself from continuing down the stairs. I turn around, and the shadow person is now a foot away from me. I yell loudly at this point. I then felt a push on my chest and crash down the stairs. I was unconscious for five minutes. My friend, his parents, and his grandmother were hovering over me and making sure I was still alive. When I regained my senses, I told everyone what happened and what I saw. The grandmother starts crying, and everyone's face goes white. It turns out that the grandmother has also been seeing this shadowy person. She was afraid to live upstairs and would not go upstairs because she claimed to see the shadow person. The family told me they were considering getting the grandma was checked out by a psychiatrist because no one else saw it and thought she was crazy. I never stepped foot in that house again. About a month after the incident, my friend's parents put the house up for sale. I guess they all moved out shortly after the incident. To this day, I have never had any other paranormal experiences. I kept thinking to myself, what could it have been? Was I having a medical issue at the time? I've never had any other experience since that day. The house gets put on the market every one to three years. It's been sold at least six times since I've been in that house. I can't confirm if other families have encountered what I did. All I know is that it's very odd that a house is bought and sold that much in 14 years. I used to live in a very old house, it was bought in the early 1960s by my grandpa. My family, especially my grandma, are very superstitious people. They believe in all kinds of superstitious beliefs. We're not allowed to cut our nails at night, or else a family member dies. Or when we visit the wake of a dead person, we're supposed to brush off our clothes before going home so that the spirit of the dead won't follow us back to our house. You know, stuff like that. Anyway, ever since I was born, this house had only two bedrooms. When my grandpa passed away and my dad inherited the house, he opted to extend it by adding another bathroom, two more bedrooms, and an extension of the kitchen. Needless to say, I was happy since I'll be getting a new room without having to share it with my brother. When the work was done, we moved my bed and along with the bookshelf and the dresser. While moving things around, my grandma came in and started chanting something. It was in her native tongue. I asked her what it was for, and she said to ward off spirits. I didn't really believe in it, but I just shrugged it off. She went around the room and then immediately stopped. She took out a rosary from her pocket and hung it by the bookshelf. She then said something that didn't make sense to me until a little later on. She said. Don't trouble my granddaughter, okay? I wanted to ask who she was talking to, but it was no use. She wouldn't answer me anyway. A few months in, and I've settled into my new room. I thought it was perfect up until the following weeks. I would often stay up late and watch YouTube videos on my phone, or I'd be engrossed in a book. One night, around midnight-ish, out of the corner of my eye, I saw something moving by the doorway. The layout of the extension of the house was a bit tight. There's a small doorway at the corner of the house where you can get into the extension. There's a long hallway from that opening to my bedroom. My bedroom was at the very end of the extension, right in front of the bathroom. 
and the only light in that hallway is by the doorway. The light would barely reach my door if it was turned on. Anyway, it was dark, and the only light in the house was in my bedroom since I was the only one still up. I knew everyone was asleep, so I thought that my mind was playing tricks on me. I ignored it and continued to read. Once again, I felt that weird feeling of being watched. I looked over by the door again, and I saw something peeking at me. I couldn't see clearly, but I knew whatever it was had long black hair. My heart pounded in my chest. I couldn't believe what I saw. I don't usually believe in the paranormal, but I was questioning everything. I didn't bother closing the door. I ignored whatever was staring at me and went to bed. The next day, I was home alone. It was around 4 p.m., and I was on my way to the bathroom. I usually go to the one right in front of my bedroom since I am used to it. After peeing, I went out, and I heard a sound coming from my bedroom. The door was open, and there was no light. My bedroom only had a very tiny window at the very top of my bed. Sunlight could barely come in, and my room was usually very dark. I turned towards the sound, and I could make out a figure in the dark. PSSSST, the figure kept making that sound. I was beyond terrified. It was dark, and not to mention, I was home alone. I bolted out of the hallway and back into the main house, where there was light. Ever since then, I would sleep on the couch in the living room just because I was terrified of what was in my room. This happened when I was still 15. I'm 22 now, and I've since moved out of that house. I heard that my dad turned the room into a guest room for when other relatives came to visit. Up until now, I still sleep with the lights on, and I make it a habit to go to bed earlier. I was 16, if I remember correctly. I was living in the small hamlet of Hilliard in Alberta, which has been a town for around 100 years. My friend and I were sitting on the steps of the old National Hall when, all of a sudden, we started hearing someone clap over and over again. We both figured it was someone outside screwing with us, so we started to yell, come on out, but all we could hear was clapping. So we decided to go investigate. I turned the video on on my phone so I could have a flashlight, and we started walking to where we heard the clapping. When we got over to that spot, it was the backyard of someone's house. They had two co-workers in the backyard who were barking at us. Looking into the darkness, I saw a head poking around the corner, looking at us. I looked at my friend, and I said, dude, look, there is someone standing there. He said, I don't see anything, and then a second later, oh, I see it. The second he said it, the figure came around the corner. But I could tell it wasn't a person, it was a figure of a woman with no features, just white static like on a TV that can't find a channel. The figure came up to the dogs and, either in a really thick accent or a very old, groggly voice, said, shut up, dog, and smacked the dogs. We looked at each other and said, this is creepy. I let go and started walking back to the hall. The yard the dogs were in had a chain link fence with no top support bar. If you've ever run from the cops and had to hop a fence like that, you know it's not very easy because it's all flimsy and it makes noise. We looked about 10 steps and turned around, and she was standing right behind us, no noise and really fast. We saw her and started walking faster. When the figure screamed something, at which point we shot around to look at it, we walked backwards the rest of the way to the hall. We sat on the steps and watched it. The figure was looking at its feet and walking in a circle. Then it looked down a back alley and started walking down there. I and my friend didn't go outside at night the rest of the time we lived there. This incident occurred sometime in 1982, before I joined the US Air Force. Around 1982, I was in college, and we were living in a rented apartment in Baguio City, Philippines. We had one bathroom near the entranceway. My bed was facing the door, which faced down the hallway where the bathroom is. On occasion, I would get up in the middle of the night to use the bathroom, and this night was one of those nights. Just as I was about to get up and go to the bathroom, I saw my mom, in her nightgown, pass by my door and go down the hallway to the bathroom. I was sure it was my mom, because it looked like the nightgown she wears, and she had short hair exactly like my mom's. I didn't see her face, only the back of her head. My first thought was, oh great, I gotta pee, and now I gotta wait for mom. After a few minutes, mom had not left the bathroom, and I was getting impatient because I had to pee. Finally, I called out, Mom, could you hurry it up? I gotta go pee. No response. I called out again, and there was still no response. Just great. So I got up and walked down the hallway to the bathroom, and I saw that the bathroom door was open. I ask, Mom, are you there? Are you okay? No response. I open the door, and no one is there. I'm confused at this point because there is no way she could have left the bathroom and gone back to bed without me seeing. I'm freaked out at this point, but I still have to pee. 
I go back to bed and can't get back to sleep. I asked my mom in the morning if she had gone to the bathroom last night, and she said she hadn't. I later found out that the owner's niece had killed herself upstairs, and they showed me her picture, and it looked exactly like the figure I had seen. But this wasn't the only incident to happen in that house. One night, I was woken by three loud slaps on the side of the dresser that was next to my bed. I mean, they were loud slaps. I was confused. This was before I had the sighting. I tried to replicate how hard you had to slap the dresser to get that sound. I found out that I had to slap that dresser very hard to replicate the slaps that happened literally a few inches from my head. The only other incident also happened while I was in college. I was taking engineering, and I was working on my plate for my mechanical drawing class. It was late at night, but I was busy. For some reason, I looked up from my drawing to look at a shoe in front of me on the floor. The shoe suddenly moved by itself across the floor, about four feet. I freaked out and ran out of the room, and I didn't bother finishing my project. Crap. But those were the only three incidents that I can remember from that house. Years later, my brothers and sister would tell me that they would hear footsteps in the kitchen. I don't know if it is real, in fact, I don't think ghosts are real. But I also don't know what the duck I saw. About 10 years ago, I was working as a private investigator. It sounds cool, but it's actually not. You spend about 3 to 5 hours each day driving to your cases, stake them out in a blazing hot car with the engine off for 8 hours, and then spend 1 to 3 hours in a hotel room writing up your reports before finally getting some sleep and doing it all over again. I did this job for about a year after completing my training to be a medic in the Army Reserves. I was young at the time, so the idea of making $50,000 a year and traveling all over the country while living out of a suitcase seemed appealing to 19-year-old me. As I said above, you spend a lot of time driving in areas you are not necessarily familiar with. On one of these late nights, I found myself driving on a twisting mountain road just outside of Taos, New Mexico. The area was heavily wooded with narrow roads that curved sharply without a lot of places to turn off since you were driving up and around mountains. In the middle of the night, as I maneuvered my rental vehicle through a curve, I saw a woman stumbling along the side of the road carrying a small child. The sight caught me off guard and sent a shiver down my spine. It was so unexpected and so out of place. There were no houses or businesses around me, and it was around 2 a.m. and pitch black. This unnerved me, but what sent a shiver down my spine was the way she moved. She lurched along with what I can only describe as a shuffle straight out of a George Romero zombie flick. And she didn't look up or acknowledge me as I drove by. She just stared aimlessly at the road in front of her. You have to remember that I was a 19-year-old who was fresh out of a year of extensive army training. I was in peak physical shape, and I thought I was a badass at the time. I had spent a month working in a trauma center as part of my training, so I didn't and still don't get freaked out by these things, but this scared me. I drove on for a minute or two, thinking about what I saw. Who was she? What was she doing out here at this time of night? How did she get here? The more rational part of my brain took over from my lizard brain, and I came to a horrifying realization. I had been driving for about a mile and a half past her, and I hadn't seen any homes or businesses nor had I come across any places to turn off since I had seen her. And it had been about 10 miles since I had come across a place to turn before I saw her. This wasn't normal. Something was wrong, I realized that she had to be hurt or in trouble. Perhaps she had been in a car accident and was in shock. What if the child she was carrying was hurt? I was a medic. I had trained for a year to help people. Sure, I was scared and unnerved, but how would I feel if I found out later that they died of exposure on that mountain and I was too much of a coward to go back and help? Wouldn't I also be scared the first time I saw combat when my friends were depending on me? I had to man up and turn around. And as soon as it was safe, I did. I drove back to where I had seen her, half relieved and half horrified when I didn't find her. I traced the road a half dozen times. Where could she have gone? There was only a small area on the side of the road and guard rails for miles. I drove and turned around, drove and turned around, and drove and turned around. I was obsessed with finding her or finding out what had happened. Part of it was out of concern for her and her child. Part of it was about proving to myself that I would do the right thing with my training, even when I was scared shless. After a while, however, it became about me proving to myself that I wasn't ducking insane. I spent hours looking for her. Eventually I stopped my car and started walking along the road, looking for any signs of her or any disturbances on the mountain to indicate a vehicle had crashed off the road and down the mountain. I walked that entire three-mile stretch of road in pitch black with a flashlight at times yelling like a madman, listening to every twig and echo with bated breath. I didn't even care about my deadline or my next case. I was so sure of what I saw that I was all in. I wasn't crazy. 
I wasn't seeing things. I wasn't overly tired. I saw her stumbling down that road, there is no doubt in my mind. The image is etched in my memory. But there was nothing. Even when the sun came up and I drove that stretch of road another half dozen times, there was nothing. And there were no ways for me to explain it away, even after countless sleepless nights in the 10 years since I became devoted to it. I don't believe in ghosts. I see the BS documentaries and laugh away their evidence and stupid orbs like the rest of you do, but I also don't know where the hell the stumbling woman and her child came from or where they went. So on the off chance you were stumbling down a windy road in Taos, New Mexico, about 10 years ago with a toddler in your arms, please tell me what the hell happened, where you came from, where you went, and that you are both okay. I've been puzzled by it for a decade now. So I really love exploring abandoned buildings. So one day, last summer, I asked two of my friends if they wanted to go explore this abandoned factory that I had heard about from a friend. The pictures he showed me really intrigued me and piqued my interest. Surprisingly, they agreed to go with me, they had never been to an abandoned place and were very hesitant when I asked. So anyway, we get there and park behind the building, and there is a door that is slightly open. They're hesitant to go in, so I walk in first. Immediately, I get a little creeped out. I get this feeling that I have never felt before while I'm in an abandoned building. I feel like I'm not supposed to be there. I know I'm not trespassing, I know I know, but it wasn't like that. Even though I'm really creeped out, I keep walking. There's a set of stairs that we walk up to get to the second floor. On the second floor, I feel fine. The feeling goes away. After we completely explore the second floor, we decide to go back down to the first floor. Now the first floor is absolutely massive. There's machinery, elevator shafts, and loading docks for trucks. We decide to walk down one of the massive hallways when I get a feeling that I should not go down there. So, not wanting to look like a puss, I just suggest that we should do that last. As soon as we turn around to go away from it. We hear what sounds like a woman singing. We stop walking and listen again. There it is again. It sounded like someone was singing a note and holding it. I know it was not the wind because it was a very hot day with perfect weather and no wind. As soon as we heard it the second time, panic overflowed all three of us and we ran out of there as fast as we could. We got back in the car and drove away as fast as possible. I'm pretty skeptical, and I want to believe that it was just a local resident messing with three curious teenagers, but I really don't know. For anyone wondering, this happened in Brownsville, Pennsylvania, at the old brewery. Brothers home. They always had trouble with plumbing, lighting, and appliances. The disastrous consequences of multiple failures cause flooding and fires, forcing them to move out temporarily for multiple remediations over time. One time they asked me to stay over and sit in the house with the dog while they went on vacation. I slept there five nights, and something happened every night. The best night, I was laying on their couch watching TV after midnight, and the dog was curled up with me when suddenly, plain as can be, came three knocks at their back patio door. The door itself and wall were all glass windows, I could see through to the whole patio, but no one was there. As if to punctuate, the dog raised his head and low growled at the door, but didn't get up and rush it, barking like he does when someone comes to the front door. I got up, opened the door, and went out back to look around. When I came back inside, the dog was sitting in the middle of the living room, barking at the ceiling for no particular reason. Their alarm used to go off too, summoning the police, who got so exasperated at the no problem found that they threatened to start charging for non-emergencies. The last night there, their alarm went off after I left, summoning me back to the house to also find no reason for it. Bro seemed to be in denial over it, but eventually sold the house. He had invested a ton of money in remodeling and wanted to stay in it. To this day, he won't admit it was haunted but also won't state why he sold it. I've lived in this house for almost three years now. At night, for a while, my bed would be in the corner of the room, facing the door. Every night, without stopping, I would feel a presence in the doorway, standing there watching me. No matter how many times I've turned on a light to see no one in the hall, I always feel it watching me at night. I was robbed about a year ago, and I was trying to de-stress when, as I walked out of my room, a girl looked up and stared at me. I think she's one of the robbers, but as I chased her out of the house, I reached the kitchen, and before I went to the front door, I saw it locked and a chair in front of it the way I left it. To say the least, I was terrified, but I didn't act like it because if you show your fear, that's all they will feed upon. So I moved my bed to the other side of the room, which made me put my full body mirror on the wall facing the door. I just wanted to try to feel better. The first night felt fine until I looked in the mirror and felt like I was about to see someone jump out of it. Lucky for me, I fell asleep before anything like that could happen. A year later, I'm still here. I feel them all the time, 
but I never let them know. When they do things, I pay them no mind. If I ever get out of this hell hole, I'll let you guys know. Until then, hello from the mover house. They like to move things, get it, if you have any questions, I'm open to answering. And to people wondering why I do nothing, this isn't the first time I've seen ghosts and had to deal with them, and it's the smartest way for me to not make them angry or upset. I moved into an apartment building after getting my first job at 18. Over the years, I've been in all of the apartments in that building, but I only ever rented two. Creepy things happen all the time, we mostly just brush them off as old pipes, faulty wiring, drafts, etc. The place was built in the late 19th century, it made sense. There was one time that I actually came face to face with what I can only assume was a ghost, and I never went back into that building again. It's weird when your brain sees something it knows can't possibly be there. In that moment, something in my mind just snapped, and I was overwhelmed by absolute, instantaneous, pants-pissing dread. All over a face, in a hole, in a ceiling. A face that, after making eye contact, backed into the darkness as if retreating into shadows that simply weren't there. It's been 11 years, and I can still see it. It had no eyes. Just black sockets. Gaunt face, drawn lips, and no teeth in its mouth. It looked afraid. And it was white. So white. There was no sound in that moment. I remember that too. This thing didn't move. It was just there and then gone. I don't know what it was. I know nobody would sleep in that room. I know that after seeing this thing, I climbed down off of the chair and walked out of that apartment, never to set foot inside again. I know that now I still get creeped out even walking past that building. My best friend's aunt died under some fairly mysterious circumstances when we were younger. It took several days for anyone to realize they hadn't heard from her, so her body was left in her house for several days. Fast forward to when I was 15 and he was 17. It was late one night in the summer, and we were hanging out at his house. The three of us, myself, my brother, and our friend, were discussing the paranormal and similar themes, and Brian told us about how he was convinced that it was all real because of some stuff he saw happen in his aunt's old house a couple years earlier. He convinces us to ride down to her old house and check it out to see if anything creepy happens. 45 minutes later, we arrive at the house. It's been nearly 10 years since anyone lived there, so everything is choked out by weeds and tall grass. Brian grabs a bag of flashlights and a video camera, and we walk up onto the front porch. At this point, my brother loses his nerve and goes back to the car. Brian and I continue towards the front door, and I feel it. A heavy, freezing cold presence was just in front of the door. Even though it was a summer night in North Carolina, still pushing 90 degrees, I had goosebumps all over my body. It took some coercing on Brian's part, but I went inside the house with him. We immediately turn on all the flashlights, and he fires up the video camera. He's telling me the story of how he and his dad stayed here for a few weeks after his parents got divorced, and I start to lose my cool. The biggest part of the story was how he woke up in the middle of the night to see a tall silhouette standing in his doorway. Thinking it was his dad, he doesn't mind. When the silhouette turns to leave, he rolls over to go back to sleep. Instead, he decides to get up and grab a glass of water. He walks down the hall and sees the silhouette heading into his dad's room. Young Brian decided to follow it, still thinking it was his dad. Instead, he reaches the door to see the shape pressing a pillow over his dad's face, trying to smother him. He yells and turns the light on, and the shape disappears. So at this point, I'm already pretty convinced there's something there. But we press on, and Brian sits down at the kitchen table. He asks his Aunt Linda to let him know if she's still here, and we wait. Maybe 30 seconds go by, and one of the cabinet doors slowly opens. Unconvinced, Brian asks her again to tell him if she's here. The hall closet door slams open, and two more kitchen cabinets open. I'm finally done. I grab my flashlight to go, and the storm door at the front of the house slams shut, and my flashlight goes out. And that's the night I decided that there was definitely some truth to it. I was living with my dad while attending hair school. One night in my bedroom, I had just gotten into bed and was staring at the blank wall in front of my bed, this was before we had smartphones to look at before bed, and all of a sudden I saw a small, neon green light appear. It kind of looked like a laser pointer dot if it were green instead of red. It started moving around on the wall in circles and eventually became a large greenish cloud that was just hovering there. I just sat there with my mouth open, not believing my own eyes, until I started getting a dreadful feeling like I needed to get out of there quickly. I got out of bed and went towards the door, and I felt all my energy drain out of me. I could barely walk. I sat down in the dining room and tried to rationalize what had just happened. After getting my strength back, 
I somehow muster the courage to go back in and get my pillow and blanket to sleep in the living room. As soon as I crossed the threshold of my room, I got that dreadful feeling again and pretty much grabbed my blanket and ran. The next day, nothing seemed unusual. About a month later, I was in there again, this time earlier in the evening, and I started getting that bad feeling again. This time, I grabbed my blanket and pillow and just said, okay, the room is yours. See ya. Nothing weird ever happened in there again, but to this day, I cannot explain what I saw. My dad sold that house and lives in a different one in the same neighborhood, and sometimes when I visit, I'll drive past the old place and think about it. So this all happened back when I was in first or second grade. Back in the first couple grades, I attended a Catholic private school that lay beneath an old church. From what I remember, this basement had originally been a funeral type home or something. The newly renovated gym had been the place where they'd keep the coffins, I believe. That room always gave off a dark vibe, a vibe I also felt upstairs in a certain corner of the church. A lot of weird things happened in that gym. One of my friends cut her hand badly on some scissors. One of the teachers nearly fell off a ladder, which was perfectly stable. And then there's my story. One evening after class, I and two sisters were playing around, entertaining ourselves. Their mother, the principal, was finishing up some paperwork, so we unfortunately had to wait. My father was in school, and my stepmom was at work. I started up a game of hide and seek, and the sisters agreed. The older one, let's call her Sarah, said she'd count, so her sister, I'll call her Lily, and I ran to hide. Lily went into one of the classrooms while I ran off towards the gym. At this time, most of the lights were off except for the emergency ones, so it was pretty dark. Along the wall on the left side, in front of the gym, were some stairs. I crouched down in the darkness there and waited. I was waiting for maybe three minutes when I felt a chill go down my spine. Instinctively, I looked over to the gym doors, which were open outward. On the glass door opposite me, I noticed the reflection of a girl about my age watching me. She was wearing a pinkish dress, perhaps a sundress, and her hair was tied up in two long pigtails that looked like my current hairstyle. This little girl looked very unfamiliar, and I remember feeling very confused, as I'd been told earlier not to play in the gym. At this time, I'd also like to say that my uniform consisted of a navy blue dress, a white undershirt, tights, and black shoes. Thus, my confusion towards her outfit. She waved at me and kind of gave me this weirdly happy smile. I waved back, still confused, and then I heard my friends calling. I went to meet them, and they seemed freaked out, spewing things like I saw the devil. And oh my gosh, something scary happened. I mentioned a little girl, which freaked them out even more, so we all ran back to the office to be near their mom. I'm still wondering as to who or what that was because every time I think about it, a huge wave of fear washes over me. This encounter was very real and very scary. Hopefully, if anyone is knowledgeable about ghosts or demonic spirits, they can help me out. I grew up never believing the boogeyman was real or a ghost, etc. In the fifth grade, my mom moved us back to New Jersey from Pennsylvania. I quickly made friends with some of the kids in my apartment complex. Soon enough, we were riding bikes all over the town. Small town, BTW, it's called Freehold. In Freehold, there is this small lake called Lake Topanemus. Behind the lake were bike trails and walking trails. Pretty much there's a no outlet street with a rusty gate. Upon passing the gate, you would be entering the woods or trails. The first thing you see is a bulletin board with nothing on it and some wooden rails with caution tape. The trail then forks off two ways, left and right. To the right were the bike trails, and to the left would be a hill that takes you to the lake. In the middle of the fork was like a 40-foot drop. This is where the caution tape is, we would ride these bike trails all the time, but the first time my friends took me there, they said some guy and his son rode off and died. My friends also referred to the spot as that of a dead man. A lot of people in the town know this place. I dismissed it as an urban legend, as every neighborhood has at least one. Fast forward years later, and I'm in the 12th grade in the same town. After school, I would smoke and drink with my friends. One night, while I was with two of my friends, we decided to smoke. Being that weed was illegal at the time, we couldn't just smoke anywhere. So we all decided to smoke at Dead Man's by the lake. We walked in and made a left. We walked down this giant dirt hill to the bottom, where the lake sat. We then made another left, as there was a dirt trail at the bottom of the hill. We made another left and continued down the trail until we reached this small area with a bench that sat right in front of the lake. We smoked two blunts and relaxed for about an hour or so. We then went up and began to leave. As we started walking back towards the dirt trail, there was a faint, holographic-looking object nearby. It looked like one of those doll things that a seamstress would use. 
It looked like a tuxedo or something. It quickly appeared and vanished. I didn't think anything of it. I was so high, everything was fuzzy. I just thought I was bugging. As we continued to walk down the dirt trail we came in on, I entered a void-like state. It felt like I didn't exist. My body was on autopilot. Then boom, I came back, and we're still on this dirt path. At this point, we are walking in a single direction. My friend Chris has his phone out with the flashlight on, leading the way. I'm in the middle, and my other friend, Karina, is behind me. It felt like something was walking next to me, and all of a sudden I heard a loud snap next to me. I tell Chris to shine his light next to me, there's a thick branch that snapped in half. It would have required a lot of force to snap. I turn to Chris and say, let's get out of here. We continue walking, keep in mind that it's 11 pm as we reach the part of the dirt path where we would walk up the hill, I see something further in the woods at the top of the hill. At first, I thought it was a deer because of how fast it was moving and how far away it was. It quickly got close enough to the point where it was easily visible. It was as bright as an LED light. This thing began gliding down the hill, completely defying physics. It stopped on the trail we were on and started back at us. It grew super bright and vanished. At this point, we're all in a state of shock. Karina in the back of the line asked what was going on. Chris and I remained silent. We all continued walking up the dirt path. Halfway up this path, I feel something clawing me all over. It wasn't physically, it felt internal. I can't really describe it. It was excruciating, and I felt like I was being restrained. At this point, we were almost out of the woods, and as soon as I stepped foot on the paved road, it all stopped. When we got to the car, I asked them, y'all saw that, right? They both shrugged it off as gnaw. I believe they were too shook up to even talk about it because, days later, they both confirmed that they saw exactly what I saw. If anyone has any idea what happened to me, I would appreciate your comment.